Good morning, everybody. Today we're going to be working in my dining room, but before we get started, I wanna show you how I'm going to switch out these fake pumpkin stems with the real stems that I saved from last year's pumpkin and dried. These pumpkins are cheap foam paper covered pumpkins that came from, I think Michael's many years ago. I bought these when we were broke as a joke. I was in nursing school. My husband was on a young police officer salary. This is what I could afford and I've hung on to them all these years. I do still love the color of them, but I thought it'd be fun to try to switch out the, the stems with the real stems and see how that went. When pulling these off, I was trying really hard not to, to rip the paper which is why I was holding it down with my finger there, as you can see me wiggling it back and forth. And it came off pretty easily. So I started trying on the, the different stems. That first one was not the right size. This second one is better, but didn't quite cover all the spots um, that the plastic stem had covered. So I tried this little guy and it actually was perfect. So that's the one we used. I'm using a low temp glue gun and I'm just gently setting it on there so I don't squish glue bubbles out around the stem. The smallest stem was absolutely adorably perfect for this little pumpkin. I kind of like how the color contrast works with this pumpkin being light green and the stem being dark green and the browner stem being on the dark green pumpkin. Just kind of worked out that way and I think it's cute. I've been going to a lot of sales lately and I have picked up some great thrifted baskets and this is one of them. It's very large, it's in excellent condition. I happen to have hit this sale at a half off day so I got this basket for $15 which I thought was awesome. After taking the vacuum to it and gently vacuuming it and then wiping it down with a damp cloth, I got out old makeup brush that I use for this and I just started brushing out all the crevices really getting the dust and grime out of all those spots it works really well because it's super soft and doesn't damage the basket but it gets in all those little nooks and crannies and really just gets that junk out of there then I grabbed my restora finish and a brush and started to touch up some of the spots that looked a little a uh, little bit like they needed some attention Again, this basket was in really good shape, so there wasn't a whole lot to do, but this just really rejuvenates the bent wood pieces on the basket. And it I think it just looks so much better after it's been retouched. Okay, so this corner cabinet is what we're gonna be working in today, but before I started decorating it, I thought, you know, it's just time to paint this cabinet. I bought this on Facebook Market, oh gosh, three, four years ago. I paid like $20 for it. It's not anything particularly special, but I thought the scalloping was real cute on the edges. I had always wanted a corner cabinet and this was definitely the right price. I knew there was a piece of molding for the top, so I climbed around in my barn and looked for it up in the loft and found it. So here it is. That's the original color the cabinet was, a dark blue. I had painted the whole thing um, white at one point, then I painted the inside a light blue, and you can see there's a little bit of damage there on the paint. So I popped the molding on top and thought, okay, yeah, well, this is, this is a good idea. So I just painted the whole thing the authentic tan, which is the color of my walls. And I think it gives it much more of a built-in look. All right, so the first look that I create here, I called it New England Spirit because it just reminds me so much of the way that things look in New England in the fall. Here, I started with a large ironstone antique platter. This is a very old piece with a lot of crazing on it. I then have this beautiful shelf fungus that came from family camp in the Adirondacks and another piece of antique ironstone. This is a coffee pot that I bought years ago, part of my collection. 
I added two pedestal cake plates, although one's kind of more of a bowl, like a fruit bowl, and then some more modern plates underneath it for some more dimension, and then a platter that is a piece of transferware to bring in that blue color. In the bowl at the bottom, I added some blue velvet pumpkins and some newly purchased foam pumpkins from Hobby Lobby. I got those this year. There's my older pumpkin with its new authentic stem. And then we've got some garland with pine cones and I guess there's supposed to be berries on those. This little pedestal I picked up while thrifting for a dollar and I added a little bird nest and a pumpkin. And then I put some antique brass candlesticks with candles from Hobby Lobby in that beautiful orange color. I was really feeling the orange here in this arrangement. Down at the bottom, I put this antique silver pot in place on the left-hand side. And then I wanted to reflect that metallic on the other side, so I used this pretty gold leaf dish it's like a candy dish and set that up on its side on the right hand side I moved that pedestal to the right I just wasn't quite happy with it and I wasn't sure what it was and you'll see by the end when I do the closer look what I ended up actually finally settling on I had two of these acorns they're um, just like the ones that I used in the very first arrangement I did for you all this year Okay, and then at the bottom I added in another little piece of ironstone. This is a Johnson Brothers wheat pattern cream pitcher. Okay, let's go in for a closer look here at version one. So I put a pretty orange uh, linen look wired bow. That uh, ribbon came from Hobby Lobby this season. I put that on the basket there to give it a little bit of dimension and movement. Our little pumpkin is up top there on the right hand side. Here's a little close up of that garland. I think it's so pretty. It's so old. I paid like a dollar for it. I, this is another thing I bought when we had absolutely no money for a decorating budget and I've hung on to it all these years because I really like it. Here's a peek at the transferware scene on this beautiful blue transferware pad platter. It's a winter New England scene. It ended up being a good thing that I used the shorter pumpkin stem because this would not have fit with that larger one that I first tried. And then you can see the change there on that top shelf. I swapped out the dark pedestal for the larger cream sugar bowl and I think it's much brighter. I also changed out the coffee pot for a soup terrain which is a little bit shorter and allowed us to see the mushroom a little bit better. I just love the texture on that beautiful piece of shell fungi and on the back of it actually is a beautiful illustration that is carved into it um, by one of my closest friends. It was a wedding gift. 
and we just celebrated our 13th anniversary this past Labor Day weekend. I was having a terrible time with the lighting when I was filming this as well, which is why the curtains are pushed back kind of funny. Okay, the second version, this has a very English country feel to it. I try to use a lot of the same elements and just switch out a few things to show you how different things can look when you just change a couple items out in your arrangement. So I have that same big platter and the shell fungi. I added a flow blue platter and moved the leaf to the back. I swapped out the orange candles for two blue colonial candle tapers. I also have a little vintage uh, tabletop mirror that I put way on the bottom. And then on top of that, I have another pedestal um, footed bowl. I love footed bowls and pedestals and cake plate. I filled this one up with the um, gilded pine cones. And then I added an antique uh, cream and sugar set with a little brown velvet bow on it. Um, I got this velvet ribbon from Amazon. I will link it below. It's very inexpensive and um, really beautiful. Added in a an acorn there. Pride of place on the second shelf here is going to be this beautiful uh, antique crystal champagne bucket. And I've got a piece of brown velvet ribbon around that. And inside it are some of those chestnuts, the dried chestnuts. On the left, I placed this antique horse head bookend. This I've had for a long time. I requested to go antique shopping on my 16th birthday and that's one of the things that I bought. <laughs> I added in some more velvet pumpkins. I used this champagne glass to hold up the blue one and the white one is on the shelf and then of course another acorn there. And then up top I have that same silver pitcher that I used in the last arrangement. I took the lid off and put some pheasant feathers in the top there. So here's the detail view of the English country fall look. So I've got that same basket up top, a blue velvet pumpkin, the horse head, and my little antique angel candle holder. Blue tapers, the pheasant feathers in the silver, the acorn, and the shell fungi with the platter. Those pheasant feathers are just gorgeous. I will link down below where I ordered those from. When I was filming this, I was looking at that champagne glass and thinking, you know, I think I need to put something in that. So I grabbed some of those tiny, tiny uh, pine cones that you've seen me use in other decorating and filled that little bowl right up. I did the same thing with the champagne glass on this shelf. There's a better view of that pretty platter. The flow blue is beautiful on that. That chestnut brown ribbon is gorgeous. I love it. It was so inexpensive too. I ordered those pumpkins from Etsy and I will try to link that shop below as well. And then here on the bottom shelf, we've got that little mirror, the dovetailed ends of the velvet ribbon. I think it gives it a little bit more panache. And we've got the gold and the silver playing off of each other. And the silver is echoed on each shelf. there we go two completely different arrangements in the same cabinet I thought it'd be fun to show just how different things can look when you swap out a couple things and colors and textures and it can just look completely different thank you as always for watching today I appreciate all your likes and subscribes you all are really helping my channel so much with your comments and your interaction and your views and I appreciate it so very much have a beautiful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye!